Hi, I'm BAPI sales leader Mike Horan, here to tell you why our volatile organic compound, or VOC sensor, is better than a CO2 sensor for performing demand controlled ventilation. Most system designers currently use CO2 sensors to indicate room occupancy as part of their demand controlled ventilation setup. But humans respirate VOCs as well as CO2. The BAPI sensor is able to measure these VOCs, therefore it can indicate space occupancy just as well as a CO2 sensor. Besides the VOCs from respiration, the sensor picks up air contaminants from other sources such as building materials, perfumes, colognes, and furniture off-gassing. So using this sensor to ventilate is a way of achieving true indoor air quality and not just CO2 dilution. And one of the best benefits is that it requires no more work than a CO2 sensor. That's because the unit has been optimized for demand controlled ventilation. Using a complex calibration algorithm, the VOC measurement is converted into an output with a high correlation to the CO2 level. This lets you use ASHRAE's occupancy-based VRP schedule to ventilate, just as you would with a CO2 sensor. Let's look more closely at this correlated output, which is one of the keys to the sensor. Extensive research was conducted on human occupancy, VOC levels, and CO2 levels in 1,500 offices, schools, and homes, and this research was used to create the output algorithm for the VOC sensor. The accuracy of this output as compared to CO2 levels is shown in the following charts. These charts were taken from January 3rd to the 9th, 2011, in this kitchen and dining area of a public school in Wisconsin. This is a true multi-purpose area. It is used for breakfast, morning snacks, lunch, and after school studies during the day, and athletic practices, exercise classes, and occasional adult meetings in the evening. The VOC and CO2 sensors are located next to each other in the dining room near the kitchen entrance. The open percentage of the outdoor air damper for this area is controlled by the VOC sensor output through a PID control loop from 5 a.m. to 2 p.m. on weekdays when the space is considered occupied. The outside air damper is closed during the unoccupied period and ventilation is accomplished by diffusion from the adjacent hallways. The following charts show the output of the two sensors and the outside air damper position during a typical week from Monday through Sunday. These charts show that the output of the VOC sensor has a high correlation to CO2 levels and is reliable, predictable, and repeatable. On Monday, the area goes into occupied mode at 5 a.m. and the outdoor air damper, the green line, begins to track the output of the VOC sensor, the red line. At 7 a.m., the VOC sensor picks up the breakfast cooking aromas and activities. The CO2 sensor climbs a short time later as the students arrive to eat. The VOC sensor has slightly higher readings than the CO2 sensor during breakfast and the morning breaks because the VOCs from the food are added to the VOCs generated by the people. This is also seen at lunch as cooking of the sausage pizza generated lots of VOCs which are added to the VOCs from the students and staff. Additional fresh air is brought in to dilute the VOCs during the lunch period. The outdoor air damper is closed at 2 p.m., but the room is still in use for after-school studies, so the VOCs and CO2 rise a little during this period from 2.30 to 5 p.m. Interestingly, there is a community meeting in the dining room at 6 p.m., and the audience is mostly adults. Notice how the VOCs track slightly below the CO2 during the after-school study period when it is mostly children in the room. Then the two switch and the VOCs track slightly above the CO2 during the community meeting period when it is mostly adults in the room. That's because adults use more perfumes and colognes than kids and therefore generate more VOCs than kids. Whether it's children or adults in the room and whether they're studying or eating, the chart shows that the VOC sensor output directly correlates to occupancy in the area. The chart also shows that using the VOC sensor to control the outdoor air damper results in appropriate ventilation for the space. The area again goes into occupied mode at 5 a.m. on Tuesday and there are increases in VOCs and CO2 during breakfast, morning break, lunch, and after school studies. There is a small spike in VOCs at about 5.45 due to peewee wrestling practice 
in a performance area just across the hall from 6 to 8 p.m. The dining room is used as a rest area for parents and as a place for the wrestlers to store their gym bags during practice, which accounts for the increase in VOCs at that time. The daytime portion of Wednesday is similar to Monday and Tuesday with increases in VOCs and CO2 during breakfast, mid-morning break and after school studies and spikes in VOCs due to cooking at lunch. There's a large spike in VOCs at about 4.45 p.m. due to a general exercise class for students. The students brought in their gym bags and put on exercise clothing which created the VOC spike at that time. The daytime portion of Thursday is similar to the rest of the week with increases in VOCs and CO2 during breakfast, mid-morning break, and after school studies, and spikes in VOCs due to cooking at lunch. There is an increase in VOCs at 6 p.m., similar to Tuesday, due to the peewee wrestling practice in the performance area across the hall. There's another increase in VOCs at 8 to 10 p.m. due to a parents' meeting for the wrestlers in the dining area at that time. The daytime portion of Friday is similar to the rest of the week with increases in VOCs and CO2 during breakfast, mid-morning break, and after-school studies, and spikes in VOCs due to cooking at lunch. There is an increase in VOCs from 6.15 to 7.30 p.m. due to student traffic in the area from an athletic event in another part of the school building. The space is considered unoccupied on Saturday so the outdoor air damper is off. However, VOCs are being generated in the dining room from about 6 a.m. to noon due to a peewee wrestling tournament in the performance center across the hall. Wrestlers store their gym bags and other belongings in the dining area during the tournament, which accounts for the VOCs during that time. The CO2 sensor does not measure these VOCs, so you would not be able to ventilate away these VOCs and odors using the CO2 sensor. Sunday is the only day with no activity in the kitchen and dining area or the surrounding spaces, so there is only background levels of VOCs and CO2. VOCs are known to cause eye, nose, and throat irritations, headache, drowsiness, dizziness, nausea, difficulty concentrating, and fatigue. All summarized under the terms SBS or sick building syndrome. But reducing VOCs goes beyond these immediate health concerns. Obnoxious odors reduce productivity in office and school settings, and in retail settings, customers may leave and never come back. Even small amounts can have a very immediate effect. A single person entering or passing through a space may deteriorate the air quality due to heavy amounts of aftershave lotion, cologne, perfume, hand soap laundry detergent residue, fabric softeners, or residual cigarette smoke. In these cases, a CO2 sensor will not correct the problem. For instance, a circuit court judge in Tennessee was plagued by migraine headaches, causing him to suspend proceedings until his headaches went away. A VOC sensor installed in the courtroom discovered that the judge's headaches were caused by support staff's cosmetics. Proper ventilation reduced the VOCs to acceptable levels and the judge's migraines stopped. In another example, a plastic injection molding company's staff was plagued by persistent minor upper respiratory ailments. A VOC sensor was installed and the customer thought it was faulty because the output stayed at maximum no matter how much outdoor air was admitted to the building. Subsequent troubleshooting revealed that a recently installed molding machine had its exhaust vented into the building's fresh air intake by mistake. Within two weeks of rerouting the exhaust, all occupant respiratory symptoms disappeared. A CO2 sensor would not have sensed the contaminant from the molding machine. One of the arguments used against VOC sensors is that because they sense contaminants along with occupancy, that the building will be overventilated and therefore waste energy. However, ventilating for occupancy and other air contaminants is actually appropriate ventilation, not overventilation, and it's the only way to ensure true air quality. And numerous domestic and international studies show that appropriate ventilation actually saves money through increased worker productivity, increased worker accuracy, higher morale, less absenteeism, and lower health insurance costs from fewer and less costly claims. In fact, According to a Building Owners and Management Association report, salaries are 83% of a typical business's annual budget, 
while utilities are only 1.2% of that budget. So a tiny increase in total operating costs for appropriate ventilation leads to huge benefits for the employees which account for 83% of the total budget. The building owners will also see the financial benefits of appropriate ventilation since complaints about comfort are the number one reason that tenants choose to leave a space. Assuring indoor air quality with appropriate ventilation means the owners will lose less tenants. They may even be able to increase rents by showing increased tenant productivity and comfort. More information on the VOC sensor, including a white paper, data sheet, and application notes is available on our website at www.bappyhvac.com. Or give us a call at 1-608-735-4800 for more information on how a VOC sensor can enhance your next DDC installation.